hello hello guys welcome back to my channel so i'm just gonna basically show you guys what i buy at the thrift store and how i style it or upcycle it so i picked up this spool from the goodwill bins a couple weeks ago um all i'm gonna do is wrap some vintage lace around it and being that it is valentine's month um i'm gonna go ahead and add a little key to my lace so I keep this one very basic. Um, I do cut my lace on the longer side because I do like to have like a little bit of tassel hanging from the bottom. Um, I'm just going to wrap it around, tie a bow, and then that is it for this one. These keys I picked up a while back. I don't remember from where. Um, I just always pick up these little things that I just put into jars and I keep them and... I eventually find a use for them um, I don't plan on putting any glue on this only because this is gonna be in my booth and in case someone wants to change it out for the season or is not a fan of lace they can just remove it next up this little stand didn't have the original um, I'm assuming it comes with a little glass vase to hold a candle or something, but I found it just by itself at the Goodwill bins. All I did was clean it up, and I'm going to add this little tree that I picked up, I think, at Goodwill. I'm just going to stick it right into there. It fits perfect. I'm going to add some lace to this as well. I'm really digging some lace nowadays. I'm sure you can tell, but I think it just gives a very romantic look for Valentine's Day. Next up, I picked up this little, um, I think it's a part of a lamp with like the bottom part of it. Um, I found it just like this alone at the bins. Um, this day I had a really good day finding a lot of salvage. So all I'm going to do with this is I bought this little wood round. I think from Dollar Tree or Hobby Lobby. All I'm going to do is stain it, give it a little bit of a dry brush, and then I'm going to set it right on top of my little base here and to stain my wood round i am using some antique wax and then i just used a regular uh, microfiber towel i made it a little damp and then just wipe it right off then i'm gonna just go gonna go in with some waverly chalk paint in the color white and i'm just gonna dry brush um white right over that brown I'm just going to add some Gorilla Glue right on the bottom of my base here. Um, I don't show it, but I do end up putting a screw right through that little hole. So if you do ever find any of these like bases to lamps, they just, they're perfect if they have the little hole at the bottom. Not all of them do, but if you find them with the holes, it makes it a lot easier. Or you can just use Gorilla Glue, but I take mine to my booth, so I just want to make sure that they are very secure. So once I add my glue, I do put my base on and then set a weight right on top of that. Let it sit overnight um, just to make sure that it is very well adhered. And then I will put my screw through and then that is it for this one. Um, I end up sealing it with some clear spray paint just because I do like the rust. So I'm not going to paint that. Um, and that is it for this one. Next up, I picked up this frame from the Goodwill. Um, it has a chip right on top, so I'm just going to go ahead and give it a paint job. I'm going to go ahead and take off the back, and I am going to start by painting it white. And I am going to use the color uh, Snow White from Waverly Chalk Paint. I'm going to get in all the little crevices. I'm going to do a little bit of stippling just to create some texture. So I went ahead and did two coats. On my frame here, I'm going to add some antique antique wax right over that white. Um, you can clear wax if you prefer to. I actually like it just going straight on over the white. But if you want a little bit more control, you can add some clear wax before putting on your antique wax. 
Putting antique wax over some white is actually my favorite thing to do. I haven't done it in a while, but painting a lot of um, ornate things with a lot of detail and using some white with antique wax, I don't know. I just really love the look of that. Um, at the end of this, you probably won't even tell that there is a crack in this frame. Um, I do end up putting a vintage print of birds in it, um, also thrifted. So if you're ever out thrifting, check out the books. Don't ever pass up the books because if it has some cute pictures in it, um, it is good to, if you are selling frames in your booth um, and you want to not just have a frame by itself and you want to add a cute picture in there, books from the thrift store are your go-to. So I do work in small sections. Um, so I put on the antique wax and then wipe it, move on to the next section. Once you have it fully covered, um, I am gonna go ahead and dry brush some white. That is just gonna bring out all that detail and add a little bit of dimension. And just look at that. Look at all the detail that comes out and you can't even tell this had a crack. Um, so if you see a pretty ornate frame and it's cracked, don't pass it up. Just give it a good paint job and you're good to go. And next up, I have these two pieces. The toolbox did sit in my booth for quite some time. Um, so I brought it back home. I'm going to give it a paint job and see if that does the trick. Um, the shelf, I picked it up at the Goodwill bins. So this toolbox did have a little bit of rust on it. So I decided to take it outside and give it a quick spray. Um, spraying on the paint, it goes on a lot thinner. So I was hoping that some of that rust would kind of bleed through. Um, I didn't get as much bleed through as I wanted to from the rust. So I'm just getting a wet um, microfiber towel here and I'm just going to wipe it back. I went a little too far here. So I did bring it back inside and all I all I'm going to do here is sponge on some paint in this little bigger area where I wiped a bit too much off. Now where I started wiping, I did get some of that rust come through, but I wanted it a little bit more. So I grabbed my sanding block and just start sanding. And I actually like how it came out after I gave it a quick sand in some areas. Which did make the rust pop a little bit more. Um... I think that is why I kind of didn't want to paint it in the first place because I do like a little rustiness sometimes. Um, especially during the springtime, I feel like it just goes. I don't, I don't know. So what do you guys think? And just to give it a little bit more springy look, I'm going to go ahead and use my IOD transfers. I think this is the seeds catalog. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cut it in half so I can make it fit onto the front of my toolbox here. Um, I do cut it a little too much, but I just go ahead and piece it back together. So here is where I cut straight ac across and then I decided that I didn't want it to look too straight. I wanted to make it look so it could blend in a little bit better. So I go ahead and cut a little bit underneath that straight cut and around my flowers um, and then I just put that little small piece right on the bottom to piece it back together so I don't waste it and then that way the other side of my transfer will fit right underneath my um, my little latch there so these transfers are super easy to use I just take it off of the transfer sheet I'm gonna set it down and then I'm going to use the little tool that comes with the IOD transfers and I'm going to just go ahead and start giving it a little pressure while at the same time lifting my transfer sheet to release it onto my toolbox. So I placed down my second transfer and I'm just going to use my little tool here to get it off the transfer sheet. I did cut off one of the little leaves on the left side and I'm just going to go ahead and place it on top of my little flower here and it looks just like it had been there before. Um, so when you do get these transfers and if you decide to get transfers just because you get it the way it comes doesn't mean it has to be placed down like that. Um, they're very versatile. Um, I go ahead and give it a quick sand with my sanding block just to make it look like 
these florals have been there and aged with the box. So while I painted the toolbox, I also gave this a quick coat of white and I did go ahead and distress it with my orbital sander. Here I'm just going to go ahead and seal it with some DIY wax, which is the wax I use with most of my DIYs. I went ahead and sealed the toolbox as well with this DIY wax. Then using a microfiber towel, I'm going to go ahead and buff it out. And that is basically all I did for this one. Super simple. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you how I styled it. And for my last thrift flipped project, what I have here is a heart that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. I gave it two coats of white. It was one of the ones that said love and hugs and kisses or something like that. Um, I go ahead and give it two coats of Waverly chalk paint. I am going to decoupage some paper that I picked up from the thrift store. And here's the beautiful paper that I picked up. It is actually drawer liner paper, I think. Um, but I'm going to use it to decoupage it onto this heart. I'm really loving the blue and white florals nowadays, as you can tell. Um, look at how gorgeous that is. Like, I had to use it on this heart. So I'm going to start with a thin layer of Mod Podge. And then I'm going to go ahead and lay my paper right over that. So this paper is not as thin as the napkins that I usually use. So I go ahead and press it down with my fingers just to make sure that I get out all the bubbles underneath. And using my sandy block, I'm just going to go ahead and take off the excess around the edges. So when paper is this thick and I'm not using like napkins to decoupage, um, I don't like to seal it with Mod Podge only because most of the time I will get bubbles. I'm not sure if that's because I'm not letting the first coat dry underneath the paper. Um, so all around just to avoid that, I just spray it with a clear Mod Podge sprayer that I pick up at Walmart. Um, but since this is just going to stay here, I'm just going to leave it as is. I'm going to go right into adding the Distress Oxide. And I don't really worry about sealing it. And just to cover up the raw edges that this heart had, I'm going to use this ribbon that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to just go ahead and hot glue it to the sides of my heart so it can have more of a finished look. So I go ahead and add a little bow to my heart along with a little clip that I hot glue. Then I added a little saying that I printed from Etsy. And that is it for this one, guys. Let me know what you think. Um, that is it for today's video. If you like what you see, please subscribe and follow for more. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok. Um, and we'll see you on the next one. I may have another thrift flip coming up very soon. Um, Thank you guys so much for being here and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.